It's iOS 18 on my Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max. My 16 Pro Max arrives tomorrow, but I wanted to go over some of the features, the customization features that I enjoy so far and one that I don't on iOS 18. Now, my Android friends, I understand. I get it, right? Okay, if you're a Galaxy user, if you're a Pixel user, you're getting a good chuckle right now about the customization features that Apple is finally giving us. And I completely understand. It's true. This is ridiculous. These are things that Android users have been enjoying since, I don't know, 2017 on some of these things, on these customization issues, uh, uh, features. However, however, it is nice that Apple's breaking down the wall a little bit and giving us a little taste of customization through the operating system. So let's go over a few of those things. Number one, see, I want one that, that, that Apple has done better than Google and that is the theming, the icon theming. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go you long press on your home screen. You go into edit and then customize. And right at the bottom, you get these options, these features. You can have light icons. You can have dark icons. You can have the automatic, which is going to sense whatever mode that you're in, whether it's light or dark mode, on your device. And then the tinted, which is going to immediately, as we watch, as we're going to go across here, hit tint. Look at that. Every single icon in my phone effortlessly tints over and now is themed in a way. And you could customize the color. There's a bunch of different options that you could have down here the, with the brightness slider, or the color slider. You could do large icons, which takes away the labeling of the icons, but makes them big and, and nice and large on there and kind of fills them out a little bit so you can have some further customization of your home screen. But what's funny about this is Google's had themed icons since the Pixel 6, right, Material U. Some of them work. Some of them don't. They put it on the developers. Some of them look like uh, uh, abstract art sometimes, and I, I don't use themed icons. This one I would actually use because it's uniform. Everything is themed well, and there's really no issues with it. And you can kind of change the colors. You might say they're ugly. That's fine. But the idea is that they're there. I happen to like the dark mode icons quite a lot i think it inverts the colors so instead of the the green around the border and then the white bubble you get kind of the green bubble around the black i think that it's done well and some of the apps uh, don't do them so well or some of the apps don't convert well but i do like that on the dark theming that the inverted thing is nice so that way if you do have your dark theme on you're not blinded by individual icons so that's nice the one thing that was always a pain in ios was resizing and moving widgets. They seem to have gotten that at least a little under control. So I could go ahead, long press here. I was kind of missing it. I'm doing it on camera, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I'm long pressing, and I'm going to move stuff around, right? And I'm able to do it without, and I can move it back, right? And my icons weren't vomited all over the place, which is a problem. You know, even if I were doing that, icons would be shifted up here. It'd be a mess. I, it would spend me an hour. I'd spend an hour trying to put things back in order. I can also resize icons with a long press and make them a tile, make them larger. It's just an overall better experience and a more intuitive experience that doesn't break your home screen. So I think we're going to see more people editing their home screens and having a customized experience on iOS 18 now because you could do that and and not have to be not have to sit there for an hour resizing and moving icons around. It's a lot more it's a lot better experience now on iOS 18. Locking app security, that's kind of cool. I mean, look, I don't <laughs> I don't know why you need to lock specific apps. I mean, the one thing the one thing that's good about it is this. If you have financial apps on your phone, if you leave your phone, if you have one of the systems where if you're around something and it unlocks, if you leave your phone unlocked on your desk a lot for whatever reason, you can have your kind of your banking app. So you're going to do go ahead and put it in a long press. And then down here at the bottom it says require face ID. Now, if you hit that, you're going to get two options. You're going to get just the require face ID option, but you're also going to get an option to hide it and require face ID. So you can not even have it show up here. And you could go ahead and have extra security. Just a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, you want to use it for uh, uh, secondary uh, personal apps. I mean, that's up to you. I mean, <laughs> whatever people do on their phones is their business, right? Your business. But it, banking apps, financial apps, secure stuff, stuff you don't want other people to see when you have your phone unlocked. You could go ahead and use that. I think it's quite nice. Control Center. Here's something I never thought in a million years that we get access to, especially the way Apple treats things. We now have access to Control Center. First of all, you got media controls, right? You could swipe up and get media controls. But you could go ahead and hit this plus icon in the top and add stuff. 
You can move stuff. You could resize stuff. You could go ahead and, like, for a while there wasn't screen record. Now it's there, but you could add it back. You could remove the additional camera app there. You could add stuff. You could add mobile data stuff, a bunch of different hotspot stuff. You could go ahead and add things, the different toggle and quit settings that you want in your control center, which is different for Apple for sure. I, I really, of all the things that I, I never thought we'd get in iOS, the messing with the control center was certainly one of them because that is something that uh, kind of directly correlates to the experience that you get. And Apple's been very, very, very cautious about safeguarding the experience because that was always their thing, right? You know, the reason why there was uniform in it, you know, you know, the reason why there were uniform home screens, the reason why they didn't allow a lot of customization was because they didn't want anything to jeopardize their carefully crafted as we smack the camera. It's a, it wouldn't be a Steve Lich's tech video if I weren't smacking the camera. They didn't want anything to get in the way and compromise the carefully crafted experience that they've, they've uh, given to us, you know, this gift that they've bestowed on us. So I understand that. But now that we've kind of got these customization issues, they work well. But I like to see Apple kind of breaking down a wall a little bit. Now, one I don't like, I'm not going to pull it up because the photo apps has a lot of family photos on there I don't want to see. But I don't like the way they've reordered the photo app. Uh, it's a mess. It, it, before, it was clean. There was nothing wrong with the photo app the way it was. Now you've got a, a million photos on top. you got a million albums on the bottom. It took me like 10 minutes to find my favorites album the other day. You're scrolling through stuff. I like the fact that I can reorder lists and priorities for that little widget at the bottom that shows pictures. I could put you know, instead trips instead of wedding photos or kid photos instead of pet or people and pets instead of whatever. That's fine. I like that. But I don't like the overall redesign. And if you click into a photo, if you just have to edit something, it is a mess. Your muscle memory is shot. It is just a complete mess. A couple other things with iOS 18. It's broken my CarPlay, AirPlay for some reason. Doesn't work in the car anymore. It reset me. My screen reset there. My screen reset is not 30 seconds or a minute or whatever it seems to be doing. There are a couple things that are very un-Apple-esque that are in iOS 18. Stability has been okay. But there are a couple things like, you know, like I said, CarPlay, not CarPlay, AirPlay in my car is not working right now all of a sudden. I've got to go back and mess with that. Some settings were reset. So those things are a little annoying and usually not what you get with an iOS update. But uh, listen, Apple's not perfect. Software is going to be what it is. But there are some things in here that I wish were a little different. Nobody was complaining about I don't know. Maybe you were. Uh, maybe people were complaining about the photo app. I was not. So I'm a little disappointed by that. And also the orientation of the edit settings that you've got. Overall, it's nice, though. I do like the theming on there. I do like the widgets. When I get my iPhone 16 Pro Max tomorrow, we're going to have more fun with that, try to make some customized, you know, theme it in with the color of the phone. So there's lots of different things you could do there, and I think it's much needed. Apple has a long way to go, obviously, to be a leader in customize, uh, customization as far as iOS is concerned. But it's nice to see the software take a step in the right direction for a change and Apple open up a little bit and kind of give us some options towards a better user experience. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.